It says, praise our God, O peoples. Let the sound of his praise be heard. He has preserved our lives and kept our feet from slipping. For you, O God, tested us. So you can say, for you, O God, tested me. You refined me or you are refining me like silver. You're bringing me. You, he's brought you into prison and he laid burdens on your back. He let men ride over your heads. But you went through fire and water and he brought you to a place of abundance. Or as I've written here, he brought you to a wealthy place. So after you've been tested, after you've gone through your Red Sea and you come out on the other side, he brought you to a, a wealthy place, a place of abundance. I will come to your temple with burnt offerings and fulfill my vows to you. Vows my lips promised and my mouth spoke when I was in trouble. You see, when you're in trouble, you say, Lord, help me. Take me out of this and I will do this. Take me out of this and I will do that. But do you do it? Do you even remember the vows that you made when you're in the Red Sea? I suggest you get a book and you write down these promises that you made to God and keep it. You know, I started a book and then the book disappeared. <laughs> so I started another one. I've got that one now. I found the other word as well. So it's to remind yourself, when you ask God for things, and he's helped you out of them, which he will do. He loves it when we make promises. But it's at the end of the day, what do you do? Do you fulfill your vow? Do you say, Lord, I will faithfully tithe 10% plus whatever if you help me out of this. And then you go back, you find 10% is too hard to give to God because you know, instead of earning 500 pounds a month, you're now earning 5,000. And you think to give God 500 is too much. And watch what will happen. God is faithful. We have to learn to be faithful. Do you promise him I will come to church and I will continue to pray for my family? And you make this extensive list and after a week you think, boy, that list is too long, you know, I don't have time. Do you promise you will read your Bible and make notes and share with people? And then it comes a time when things are going so well, you thought, I don't have time for this. So you find yourself back in the Red Sea at that same point. You must mess with God. You must mess with God. You have to also remember that the vows you make will not only affect you, but it's those around you. I often say when we pray, it's like the ripple effect. You drop a stone in the lake, you see the ripple effect. You're not isolated. It has an effect. It has an effect. Have a good effect on those around you, not a bad effect. So when we make vows with our mouth, remember write them down somewhere. Get your personal book. You don't have to share it with your wife, your husband, your children. Let that be your personal book between you and God. And you go through it and you say, Lord, this happened. You prayed for this, it's happened. What was my vow? What was my promise to God? He doesn't need it, but it's for us. It is something he's teaching you. He's teaching you to be faithful. He's teaching you. And also, you see, once you do that, once you're faithful with God, you will then be faithful with those around you. Because remember, nobody knows what you told God. If you can't be faithful with God, who's created you, who, who you speak to in secret, what about those you tell your children, well, if so, 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 I'll do such and such, and you don't do it. What the effect that will have on those around you? What is the, that effect? How they will look at you? It is not God that's been brought to shame. It is you. Because God does not break his vows. He has never yet broken one of his vows. Verse 13 says, I will sacrifice fat animals to you, and an offering of rams. I will offer bulls and goats. And verse 16, come and listen, all you who fear God, and let me tell you what he has done for me. Don't we want to get to that point when we say to everyone, we get up here for testimony, say, come and listen, all you who fear God. Let me tell you what he has done for me. I cried out to him with my mouth. His praise was on my tongue. If I had cherished sin in my heart, the Lord would not have listened. But God has surely listened and heard my voice in prayer. Praise be to God who has not rejected my prayer or withheld his love from me. So we want to come to the point where we stand here and we say, Praise be to God who has not rejected my prayer or withheld his love from me. As you come out the other end of the Red Sea, we want to stand up and say that. You see, if you cannot formulate a prayer in your mind, it is already there. There's a Bible full of prayers. You don't have to use King James. You have Amplified. You have the message, which is wonderful. You have New American Stand. You've got all different versions, translations of the Bible that you can use. 
Use the prayers. Use them. Personalize the prayers. Don't, then, don't just say them because somebody else said it. It is you. This is today. This is your word. It doesn't change. You have to take these prayers and use them for yourself and use them now. The song says, don't worry. The Lord said he will never leave you nor forsake you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. And finally, 1 Corinthians 10.13. 1 Corinthians 10.13. And finally. This is such a wonderful promise. This is such a wonderful promise. And I will read it from the NIV. And it says, and this is for you as you're going through your Red Sea. As you're going through your desert. It says, no temptation has seized you except what is common to man. So there's nothing you are going through that is new. It is common to man. And this is a Bible written over 2,000 odd years ago. It is common to man. So what you're going through, somebody somewhere has experienced it before and are experiencing it now. You're not isolated. You're not alone. You can't look at me and say, she has no problems. You can't look at any one of us. You can't look at Monica, Mama Rose, Bishop. You don't know. But know that in common, the Bible says, no temptations has seized you except what is common to man. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. So let's remove temptation. No challenge, no problem has come to you that, has, that is not common to man. And God is, not, is, God is faithful. He will not let you be challenged. He will not let you first face a problem beyond what you can bear. So even when you think, oh, this is more than enough. Go, no, no, no. No, no, no. Go back to your Bible. Somewhere in there, someone has been down that road before. Someone's had husband problem, children problem, boss problem, money problem, you know, health problem. Any kind of problem. It's already been there. You know, it's all been there. But when you are tempted, when you are challenged... God will provide a way out so that you can stand up under it. God will provide a way up, out so that you can stand up under it. So that is as you're going through your Red Sea, remember that what you're going through is common to man. And God will provide a way out so that you can stand. And then you can say, as in Psalm 66 verse 20, I will close with this. I will say, praise be to God who has not rejected my prayer. Praise be to God who has not rejected my prayer or withheld his love from me. When I get to the other side, uh, you know, not, not die and the other life, but the other side of my Red Sea. We will all be there rejoicing. When we all get to the other side of our Red Sea, we will all be there rejoicing. Amen. Amen. Can I ask you to stand? Because I'd like to pray with you at this point. Because I know we're all going through our Red Sea. And this has been a reminder for me that we're not on your own. Sometimes you think you're on your own. Sometimes you think you may be your physical parent's only child, but your heavenly father, we are all his children, and he knows every one of our needs. So if you can close your eyes with me, and, and, and you know, I'll take this privilege and the honor to pray with you. Our loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your praise. We thank you for your glory. We thank you for your honor. But Father, especially, you are Jehovah Rohi. You are our shepherd we shall not want. You are Jehovah Shama. You said you will never leave us nor forsake us. Father, you know the need of each and every one of your children here today. You know what we require. You know those who are in the desert. Those who are still in the midst of crossing the Red Sea. Only you know if we are close to the end of that journey. Father, we commit, I commit everyone's here into your hands and ask you, Father, to meet every person at their point of need. Lord, bless us, only you can bless. Lord, strengthen us, only you can strengthen. Lord, give us grace to get to the other side. Father, and I pray that you have not given us a spirit of fear, but I pray that your love, your power, and your sound and clear mind would abound in all our hearts. And Father, you will give us wisdom, knowledge, and understanding to deal with the challenges we face so that we can come out the other side of our Red Sea and praise your holy name. Father, I thank you and bless you for all that you've done and for this day. 
And for this honor, Lord, we glorify your name. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you very much.